comes to these restoration jobs, a lot of time goes into not just the work, but there's procrastination, trying to work out how to do the job and get the courage up to do it, and cleaning, cleaning. There is so much time just goes in to try and get off grease and paint and shit. This rugged old piece of gear is about as clean as I can get it. Doesn't look that clean. Uh, have a look at these big rust holes. And this section here that's been welded on just looks like it's some sort of protection or a guard, but water can get in through that crack, as you can see there, can't get out, so it's rusted out these nasty big holes. My proposal will be, rather than fill them in, is just get the angle grinder and clean them up and leave them open. Maybe give them a spray inside with tar, but at least the water can get out in future. So I don't know if they're really necessary at all. What happens now that I've scraped it up, if I leave it overnight, come back the following day and it's all rusty again, so I want to get a, a coat, at least a coat of paint on it, so that we're not going backwards. Better or worse, we are running out of light. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Let's see how we go. Right. Now I'm looking at this and thinking that in the workshop manual this doesn't exist. Um, so it probably doesn't have to be there. It's causing troubles. There's rust forming on the underside of the, of the axle housing. I'm thinking I might just be better just cutting it off. Just cutting it off so I can get at the rust and stop it in its tracks. Because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get it all. And and God only knows what mischief is gonna come of that. So I think it might be time to get the cutting blade on and very, very carefully trace along the welds and hope that I don't do any catastrophic damage, which uh, yeah, very possible. Very, very possible when a man of, of my ability gets behind power tools. So this is the final result. We cut that thing off, got rid of it, ground it all back, and scraped away all the rust. There was a lot there, so I'm happy I did it. Got into all the nooks and crannies, cleaned all that up, and what I'm planning to do now is give it a, a run over with this rust reforming goop, and then a wash over with a wet cloth, and let it dry out, and then amaze you all with my professional and outstanding and artistic vehicle painting techniques with the rust -oleum.
spectacular. Going to be a few more coats, and then we're going to look inside, replace some seals, maybe a bearing or two, and hopefully it won't get too complicated. This is another cunning invention. What I'd like to do from this point on is to remove this nut. That's where my invention is going to come in quite handy. Replace the pinion seal, the drive flange, and maybe even the bearing as well. Then I want to split this housing in half and have a look at the general well-being of inside the differential. Also going to replace that gasket. And if it all looks okay -ish, it's going to be reassembled, and then we can start building the back end of the truck. It'll either work or it won't. Oh! That wasn't on very tight. Knock off. I don't, have, I don't have another one of them. Oh, ho, ho. there we go. Inside where the axles live is quite scungy. That's where an old dunny brush presents itself as a handy tool to rectify the situation. After all that, the diff and the final drive is finally out. And in my expert opinion, and I am calling myself an expert, Moving on, it actually looks quite good. All the bits that are supposed to turn and swivel seem to do so. Not seeing any nasty big chunks or anything like that or anything out of the ordinary. And uh, all in all, I would think that I would just put it all back together and refit it. However, there are a few tests I'd like to do before we proceed with that. There we have it. When you see a man in overalls and a dial gauge, you've got to take him seriously. What we're going to be doing here, as you can see, we've got this magnetised to the crown wheel. Dial gauge is set up against the housing. We're going to be checking for a thing called backlash. That's what they used to call it back in the old days. Not to be confused with the modern day backlash, which is the public outcry when someone says something stupid on the internet. We're looking for this, the click clack. That little click clack is called backlash. And that's that little gap between the pinion and the crown wheel. It's important to have some, but you don't want too much. And in our book of knowledge, it says that uh, the tolerance is between somewhere in there. <laughs> the tolerance is, is between somewhere in there and up to about that point of a squillionth of an inch. You don't want it to be any less, you don't want it to be any more. So, we're going to do a test. 
We're just going to zero it in. Holding the drive flange. And then we're just going to gently rock it back and forth. 1.1. I wasn't really expecting that. Probably, probably something more along the lines of, uh, of way out. So what are you going to do in the event you have to make some adjustments because the backlash is out of tolerance? Well, the first thing we've got to do is release these little lock pins, if that's what you want to call them. Once they're out of the way, they hold in place these bearing caps. There's one on either side. And what you would do is you would tighten one and loosen the other. And depending on which one you did, it would either bring in the crown wheel to the pinion or push it away. And that would either increase or decrease the backlash depending on the tolerance that you have on your dial gauge. One of the little issues is that these funny little bearing caps require a special tool, as you see here in the book, to be able to loosen or tighten. I'm sure you could come up with some, uh, some alternative arrangements, because we certainly don't have that special tool. Wilms thinks that I'm the only special tool in this workshop. Anyway, um, we're going to do another test, and this one's going to be called, uh, I think it's called Runny Up or something like that. Anyway, we're, gonna, we're checking for the wobble in the crown wheel to see if, if anything nasty's happened using a dial gauge. Our next little test, got the dial gauge set up on the, um, on the crown wheel, and we're just going to simply... Turn that drive flange, and we're just checking for any nasty kind of warping effects that might appear on the dial gauge. There's a little bit of fluctuation there, but I'm not seeing anything that's scaring me. I think that's as good as done for me. No, <laughs> don't want to look too hard. They might find something. <laughs> Found enough in the back of the chassis on that truck. Terrible. So for anybody who needs to go a little deeper into the mysterious world of differentials and final drives, I'd have to recommend a fellow on YouTube who used to call himself Land Rover Toolbox Repair Videos. It's gone a bit more general now. It's like Vehicle Repair Toolbox Videos. Now he does a three-part series on stripping apart differentials. So there's all the little tests you need to know, all the components inside, tips and tricks. It's quite comprehensive and very handy indeed. Now his channel is very popular, so it's unlikely that you're watching us and you don't know who he is. However, if you don't know, now you do. And I highly recommend that little series for anybody who has to get in deep and dig around inside those formidable final drives. Now that we've decided that we're going to put all this back together, we have our gasket. And this is not a job for dirty fingers, so we have some plastic laying on the bench that's been masked, masking tape down, and it's just big enough. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use this special magical compound called Permatex Aviation Former Gasket. And from my understanding how this works, it's kind of same, same, but different to other gasket maker stuff, but it's quite good for metal to metal contact and um, can be used on gaskets for that little extra, little extra sort of sealing. There we go, look at that. Over. Right, there we go. I think that's good. Let's just hope that it don't stick to the... Alright, we're going to leave this to air dry for a couple of minutes. And in the meantime, we shall grab our uh, thing. goes into it. All right. So 
So we won't press it in just yet, but we need to work out exactly how this goes on. I think it's this way. There we go. We'll just let it sit there. Go and grab some popcorn and I'll take this shit away. Time to stick it down. There we go. In the place. Now to get that differential final drive in, it's very heavy. So we're going to come up with a uh, an alternative plan using blocks. Because I don't think I'm strong enough or have the grip to be able to just drop it in like this. So, we'll put that there. We'll balance it. And I think I'm going to be using my guts to, <laughs> to hold things in. So, hopefully we don't have any shit on there. Problem with a dusty environment. I can't afford my extra wall. I got as far as three walls and a roof, which, which is quite posh for me. Oh, all right, a heavy bastard. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this in without knocking everything out of place. All right, it's got to go in flat as well, so that can be problematic. There's a there's a lot of bolts. I might turn it upside down. Okay, get a wiggle. And well, that's looking pretty good. Oh. Okay. But everything's in place and we made sure that uh, <laughs> we've got it the right way around. We're gonna put our uh, nuts back on. Yep, nuts with spring washers. So I found with the fasteners uh, for this series one, I've been having trouble finding new ones. So luckily I've saved all the old stuff and I've been reusing that for now. And I was wondering why. So it seems from my research, and this is only very loose, taken with a pinch of salt of course, is that there's British Standard and then United States Standard and fine threads and coarse threads in both. So, they're different. And the ones that fit here as you can see, they have 20 threads, kind of, or whatever you want to call it, per inch. Where the 3.8 version here in the States are either a, uh, a 16 or a 24, I believe, if memory serves me right. So, these new ones that I want to get will have to be imported either from the United Kingdom, but I do believe also that Rovers North has these British standard nuts and bolts. So if you're working on a Series 2 or maybe a early Series 3 or, or uh, definitely a Series 1, you're going to be running into that issue if you're outside the UK. And I'm not sure what the Australian, you know, back in the old days kind of system was. Probably more aligned with the UK, so you Aussies might be in with a better chance. Now these things are very badly flogged up, the originals, but I'm just going to have to put them back on. And... Um, and then once the replacements are here, then yeah, just swap them over. I'm sure that won't be an issue. And this might take a while. The next trick that we're going to perform today is removing this retainer for the oil seal. So when the original oil seal was removed, I didn't put it back in. It's one of the last things you're going to do after you've performed all the necessary tests to make sure your final drive system's up to scratch, of which we did a few. So let's get underway there. We had some tools on hand. <laughs> Vanished, here we go. Right, 
one oil seal casing. This is actually a, a little bit scuffed up. I'm not completely happy with that. If uh, in hindsight I would have liked to re replace this component, but just to keep the ball rolling, I think um, we'll just go ahead. It'll be fine. So the oil seal is going to fit in like this. But before we do that, the workshop manual recommends that this gets warmed up a little under the fire torch, not too much. And the oil seal's outer edge is coated in what they call a joint compound. And from my research, I couldn't really understand what they were talking about. However, I think I could just go ahead and use this same aviation former gasket that I used on the main one between the housing and the differential. All right, all the surfaces are cleaned. We got that there, that there, and I think we can go ahead and start warming things up a little. Try and get this in level. Special tool. Oh, I think I might have executed that with perfection. What we're attempting to bash on here is a filth guard. We'd previously removed it to ensure the seal would go in straight. This gasket replaces the original metal joint washer we'd removed earlier on. At least, I hope it does. New lockers are being installed, along with new bolts. Screws are all locked in. All we need to do now is get our new drive flange. The oil seal lip already has a little smear of grease. And then we have to torque down our castle nut to about 85 foot pounds, which is not gonna happen with the differential in this position. There's a lot of work in this, isn't there? This truck better run after all this, so I'm gonna have a fit. Okay, our new drive flange is right here. like as I was fitting it on it was it was kind of getting ripped apart it wouldn't fit and um, funnily enough it came out of a box of brick part written on it <laughs> I've heard some interesting comments about them so uh, maybe that five or six dollar dry flange isn't what we want we might just stick with the original Hammer. another invention That's all there, good. That one good, oh, see, straight in. All right, I'm gonna put this axle housing on the ground, torque up that castle nut to 85 foot pounds and, and we're done. So in the next episode is gonna be the arse and reassembly. We're gonna put it all back together. The springs, the axle housing, we're gonna put on brakes and hubs and even the wheels. So join me then for the next episode.